So at 13th Street, we, we are aware of the possibility that Gamay Noir can produce something much grander than perhaps you know, people give it credit for. And we've done that since 1998. And we've got great Gamay at Sandstone Vineyard, um, old vines now planted in the 19, early 1980s. And uh, this is not a sort of um, light, juicy, fruity, simple red. This is a red that rivals, in our opinion, the best of the Pinot Noirs in the region. It's a different wine, a different style, but it's still on that kind of, uh, in the sort of light to medium gamut, but with a lot of aroma and a lot of flavor and a lot of structure and a lot of things that might surprise you. And uh, we've really specialized in making very serious Gamay's. Um, again, two categories, the what we call the sort of estate series Gamay, which is uh, under $20 and um, is a little more on celebrating the fruit character, the berry fruit, the cherry character of, of that grape variety with just subtle nuances of spice and subtle nu nuances of earthiness and, and you know, gaminess and some things that make it, wow, that's a lot more complex than I was expecting. Even a little bit of an Italian uh, character to these wines. And then the Old Vines Gamay, which comes from Sandstone exclusively from the Old Block. This is a wine now where it's dark in your glass. Uh, it's got incredible complexity in the nose, very, very powerful on the palate with, you know, great acidity, which is what Gamay is known for, but maybe a little more grip and a little more power. So if you've, you know, we, uh, we encounter people who say, I like a, a dry, powerful red. We'll often serve them an Old Vines Gamay and say, try this because it, it has an attack. It has some real, some real power and that, that makes it better with a different type of food. Uh, then the, the estate gamay might go with. Uh, it's certainly more age-worthy, um, and uh, it's a real serious wine with a lot of complexity in the nose, a lot to smell, and a lot to taste. And we're one of uh, a couple of real serious gamay producers in Niagara. We feel that gamay, and we're hearing this from a lot of other winemakers and a lot of visiting media, that gamay might be a great variety that Niagara needs to invest a lot more time and energy in. So we're happy to be pioneers. We're happy to be sort of ahead of the curve with that great variety because you know. We're going to see more and more good Gamay in Niagara, and then we're sort of one of the first. So Sandstone Gamay and the Estate Gamay are two of the reds that I think are really worth searching out at the winery. Um, I think our blended reds are exceptional as well. Jean-Pierre, our winemaker, is just great at identifying the unique characteristic of each grape variety and saying, well, you know, this is what this grape can bring to this blend. And the sum of the parts in the end is always better than any one of the individual pieces. You know, when he vinifies our red palette, for example, our red, our red blend, which is, again, very affordable, mid-teens. Uh, this is a wine that surprises you because maybe you go in and you think, well, it's very affordable and it's a blend, so I'm not quite sure what to expect. So, you, you know, your expectations are sort of maybe not set. You don't, you don't really know what... Most of the time, we find that people have this and they think, wow, that's a lot more than I was expecting. It's got lovely, you know, soft, easy drinking aspects, but it's also got a lot going on in the nose as well. I can smell, you know, the Cabernet influence and I can smell this spicy kind of peppery note that maybe is coming from the Gamay or the Syrah. Um, I'm getting that nice, soft, lush mouthfeel that I suspect is coming from the Merlot. All of those grape varieties are contributing something and they don't, they don't kind of mask each other out. They're just lining up side by side. So I can see that this is a complex wine that has a lot of investment in it, a lot of care in the, in the, in the production of it, in the blending of it. And yet it's the least expensive red we produce. And so it's been one of our fastest sellers, just like the white palette on the white side has been one of our fastest sellers. Um, because people get the 13th Street pedigree, the quality of our vineyards, the history of our vineyards in a very affordable wine and it over delivers, I think it really is. We want people to pick up a bottle of red palette and compare it to any $15 red from anywhere in the world. We want them to pick it up and say, I want it to taste like Australian Shiraz because that's not what it's trying to be. It's trying to be a great Niagara blend. But for $15, we want you to say, it's got just the same amount of character. It's got the same uh, value in terms of the aroma and the complexity. It's beautifully balanced. It goes beautiful with food. I can't spend $15 anywhere else in the world and get more value than I get for, because Niagara's at a point in its history now where we're not just comparing our wines to each other. We're now comparing our wines to the best 
in the world. We've got a, a much bigger international audience than we ever used to have. And people who used to drink Malbec from Argentina or Cabernet from Chile or Red Burgundy or whatever the case, Rhone Valley, you know, uh, they're our customers now. And we want them to think, I'm okay sharing my dollar with the Rhone and with Niagara. I'm, I get a different experience, but I get just as much pleasure. And it just depends on the day of the week, the time of the year, the food I'm serving. Um, so our wines have to be up to that challenge. And I, I think, you know, Red Palette's a perfect example of that. Um, Pinot Noir is something we haven't done for a long time. Um, we've done it probably three times in the first 12 years of our existence. And Jean-Pierre uh, wasn't known for his Pinot Noir, and yet he became really engaged with the grape variety in the 2009 vintage, and has made Pinot Noir in 2009, 2010, 2011, and it's become sort of a staple in our portfolio now. It's not the least expensive wine we produce. It tends to be one of the more expensive wines we produce. But we know Pinot Noirs are very discerning, Pinot Noir customers are very discerning customers and they, they're serious about their wine purchase because Pinot Noir is typically an expensive grape variety. So they think long and hard about it. It's got to be good. It's really got to deliver on all of their expectations, otherwise they're not going to waste their hard-earned dollar. So we're really pleased with the way our Pinot Noir program has gone and, and Jean-Pierre really embraced the grape variety and I think we're starting to make one of the, one of the, uh, the Pinot Noirs in, in the Niagara region that you need to sort of look at if you're a Pinot Noir lover. Um, so I would add that to the list of reds that I think are really exceptional. Make sure to visit 13thStreetWinery.com and join our newsletter. Watch more videos, download complete stories, tasting notes, accolades, and buzzworthy news. And to order your favorite wines.